Okay, my friends, it's going to be short and sweet. I got this sent to me from a friend, Geographical, and they're talking about the Eye of Sahara, and they have figured out a geological marvel in the middle of a desert you can see from space. Well, they can see that, but there's nothing else they can see, apparently. It says, from the air, it appears as a vast bullseye in a desert. The symmetrical geology marvel a rocky, isolated region in Mauritania is known as the Eye of the Sahara, or more recently, the Ricard structure. Initially believed to be an impact structure resulting from a meteor, subsequent studies established its true nature as an uplifted geological dome. Well, I disagree. 40 kilometers in diameter, exposed concentric rings of rock created by erosion. Well, yes and no. The force of erosion sculpted this structure, forming distinctive circle ridges. They're just talking about erosion, creating a remarkable circular pattern from sedimentary and igneous rocks. The rings have different rocks of various ages, and the ridges are mostly made of quartzite. All right, the locals have known about it for millennia, and it's hard to comprehend fully from the ground level, as it was the first astronauts who drew scientific attention to the structure, assuming it was a meteor crater. On the ground, research discovered that it was in fact formed by erosion over millions of years. Da -da 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 -da. Erosion has exposed spectacular scatterings of rhyolites and gabros, igneous rocks formed deep beneath the Earth's surface. Well, now, listen to this. Beyond its geological wonders, the Rickot structure holds archaeological significance. Excavations have uncovered evidence of human activity, including Eclean and artifacts and tools associated with Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis around two million years ago. Well, reveal a history of tool making and hunting. Now, the distribution of these tools serves as a historical record influenced by paleoclimatic factors. Sahara functioning climate experience shifts between wet and dry periods played a role in shaping the lifestyle of the inhabitants. Then it says, despite the scientific exploration, which they know all about it, the scientists, explaining the geological and archaeological narrative of the Rickard structure, some, like Roger Spur, still claim the Eye of Sahara is evidence of the lost city of Atlantis. They claim it corresponds with Plato's depiction of Atlantis. Yes, I do. All right, I wrote a paper on this back in 2015 about Atlantis, the draining of the Sahara. The Sahara was an ocean at one time, and it drained right out of here across Atlantis and all the way out into the ocean. I'll show you that in a minute. So this goes back quite a ways. And now this is, I didn't write these books. A friend of mine is just putting them out. I have nothing to do with them at all. He's just using my papers and, and, and writing them about mud fossils and about about all the stuff I do, the electron flood theory and all that stuff. But here's where we're going to look right now. And I am going to support my claims with the evidence and show you some. Because somebody just contacted me just a few minutes ago, actually. And they said, no, you can't be right because this is higher up here than it is over here. Well, let me explain that. And it is not, but let me explain what he's talking about. All right, let's take the big picture. There's the Eye of the Sahara. Atlantis. All of this washed out. You see this wash out here? And it piled up there creating the Cape Verde Islands and it end up slushing off the sides after it piled up enough. This is what they call an alluvial plain. It's just a flat mud flat. And this is what all ran out here. It's very, very simple and easy to see. You see? It ran right out, right out there. Now, why was this an ocean, and how did that run out of there? Well, let's look at what Atlantis was, first of all. And you can see, to me, it looked like there was a bazillion little boat docks coming in. You see all these little entryways? And they could have been boat docks. 
because they're all over this thing. Every one of these rings has a whole series of entryways coming up to it. You see like little channels coming in. So at first I said, well, it makes sense. All right? And then I started looking real close and I thought maybe I could even see some buildings and stuff. It's like they were on this ring and they could go between rings and these were all the little docks and stuff where they would come in. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But that sort of pointed me to the fact that there were so many little inlets here, there could have been boats coming into this and docking in here. And the main entryway would have been right up through this way, I would believe. I did find out more about this. I'm not going to go into it right now. But when this washed across here, Plato said it was just outside the Straits. Now, whether he said the Straits of Gibraltar, I don't know. But this is the Straits. Okay, that is the Straits. Now, what it's doing right there, who knows? I think I do. It was holding back the ocean, which was in a bowl in here, in the Sahara Ocean. And it broke over here. It broke through over here and ran out. Right through here, it ran out over the top of Atlantis all the way out into the ocean. Now, somebody said, oh, no, no, you have the wrong heights. It's wrong. And I said, no, I don't think it is wrong. And here's why. All right, <clears throat> there, was a, uh, there was a bowl into the Sahara, and this was higher up here, but this was an entrance, I believe, that would let through that strait. So normally it would have been this high up. So how high is that? Well, right here it is 463 meters. All right. Well, over here, it's 290 meters right in here. What happened was this should have been up to the same height as this. And then it flushed through over here. It's 373, and it comes down and down and down and down to 352, 340. And then over here, it's all the way down to 290. It's starting to wash through. And it's coming all the way out here at 284, 288. All right, now, as you come out here, it's still it's 298, 298, 314. He was looking over here. This guy just said, no, it's, it's higher up here. Well, here it is. It's 534. Yes, it's higher up here. But guess why? That was a backlash coming in, all right, because so, it piled up. Here, if you go here, it's 452, come back, 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 it's 5-something. It, it, hits a, it hits a height of 500 up in here, which is 527, 523, 520, 514. It's, this is the backlash. And it comes now it's dropping back down again, 470, 450, 425. So now it's dropped. That came back and dropped down. So that was a washout over the top of that bubble. And either it was just left like a bubble and it flowed over the top of it, or it backlashed. I think it was a backlash. Now Plato said when this ran out, they will never speak of mud again. <laughs> there was so much mud. Alright, and uh See, this is like 283 down in here, 270. Oh, this is down to, and it, up the edge. This was a bowl up here. That's what it was. That was a bowl. This was all ocean at one time. All right, there's some high spots in here too, yes. But there's a lot of low spots. Over in this area here, it's 290, 300. It's 263, 240, 210, 250. So this whole area would have been an ocean. That's a pretty good site. You know, it's as good as the Mediterranean. I don't know about over here how high it was. But um, I showed you that's Atlantis as far as I'm concerned.
It fits exactly what Plato said. 